Hi, this is Asing. You are now watching Asing SL TV. Today, we would like to share how to create histogram with unequal class widths. Firstly, let's cover this range of data into a table form. Press on Ctrl T, check my table has pages. If any, click on OK. Next, let's determine class width and the standard frequency for each class. To determine the class width, set equal, take the upper class boundary minus the lower class boundary. Press on equal and Excel will order generate all the class widths for us. Next, for the standard frequency that is equal to the common class width which can be determined by using the mode function, select the single type, then select the column for class widths, closing parenthesis, and we should multiply the corresponding frequency and divide it by the corresponding class width. Press on enter and we should obtain all the the values that we need. Next, we should change the layout of this table. Either change how the data presented or copy to a new shade. I'm going to create a new shade and rename, let's say, histogram. When transferring data from one tab to the other, sometimes it's quite annoying if you have to keep switching in between tabs. To make life simpler, let's go to the view tab and click on new window and this work book will be duplicated. Next, let's resize the window according to our preferences and we should be able to notice that whenever we update a window, the changes will be made to the other window as well. I would use one window purposely for the data and one window for me to write formula and make changes. Since nothing to do with frequency and class width, I'm going to first hide it so that I will have a better view. To create the histogram, we need a column for all the class boundary. Let's make use of to column function. Select all the class boundaries that we have and press on enter and all the class boundaries will be presented under the same column. Next, let's determine how many classes we have. I would like to create header set equal to class type as string which means that within quotation marks and now use emphasis and connect with the sequence function to generate the number of classes we have since i need only one row for the header for the rows component type one comma for the columns component which depends on how many classes we have let's make use of the call function opening parenthesis select either the lower class boundaries or the upper class class boundary but not both closing parenthesis to end count function closing parenthesis to end sequence function press on enter and we shall obtain all the classes that we need now it's the time for us to transfer the standard frequency to this new table notice that each standard frequency should appear two times in this table since one class should have two class boundaries one for the lower and one for the upper. To ensure that Excel transfer the frequencies automatically and correctly, I'm going to make use of make array function and we should be able to manipulate the number of rows and the columns that we need. To control the number of rows, let's make use of the count function. How many rows we need depends on how many class boundaries that we need. We we can either select all the class boundaries that we have or only select one column of the class boundaries, closing parenthesis and multiply to. Then make a comma to move to the columns component, which determined by the number of classes that we have. Again, make use of count function. This time, we should only select one of the type, either the lower or the upper, but not both. Closing parenthesis make a comma and we can now create the function by using lambda function. We need two parameters here, one for the row component and one for the column component. Since there can be any 
letters, I would simply use R for row while C for column. Comma, I would use if statement to create the formula. As spoken just now, each frequency shall written two times under each class. Then, I would compare the number of rows with the number of columns. To ensure that we always match with the number of columns, I would use the floor function. Take the row and divide it by 2, and this should be equal to the column number. However, one problem that we might be facing here is we should bear in mind that both R and C start from 1. When R is equal to 1, R divided by 2 equal to 0 0.5. If we apply the floor function, it becomes 0, which is different from C. To overcome this issue, let's increase R by 1, which means that we should add opening parenthesis R plus 1 and closing parenthesis. And now move to the end, make a comma to end the logical test. To return the true value, I would make use of the indirect function. The standard frequencies that should be written are always under column E. Let's pick a cell. Instead of referring to the table, let's pick the other row to change to the name of this shape. Then, in front of the name of the shape, I would make use of quotation mark to convert it to string since it must be in terms of text. Start with quotation mark. Of course, we have to end with quotation mark. To return the correct standard frequency, I will make use of emphasis and join with the floor function. Again, use the same formula. That is R plus 1 divided by 2. However, another issue that we might be facing here is the first value that is going to be returned is 1. However, we should return starting from the second row. To overcome this issue, very simple, simply plus 1. And now closing parenthesis to end the true value comma for the value e force i would return nothing so let's make quotation marks to indicate empty closing parenthesis to end if statement closing parenthesis to end lambda function closing parenthesis to end make array function press on enter and all the pictures frequencies will be written automatically to the correct class as we can see here. And the advantage of using table is it is fully dynamic, where where we insert a new entry, this would be updated automatically to this new table as we can see here. Once we have transferred all the values that we need, if you wish to close one of the windows, of course can. We do not have to save or make a copy. We could simply close it. This is because the changes will be recorded automatically. Now let's insert the histogram. Go to the insert tab, select one of the classes excluding the header and click on insert line or area chart. Under 2D area, select stack area and we should have the first ball. Now right click the chart, select data, add for the series values, insert, select the second class, insert, click on OK, add series values, insert the third class, insert, click on OK, repeat exactly the same steps for the rest of the classes. This have to be done manually because I'm using make array function to bring all values here. Therefore, Excel couldn't recognize them as separated classes. Once all all classes are being added. Now let's add it the horizontal acid labels. Insert, select all the class boundaries, insert and click on OK. OK again. Next, double click on the horizontal acid labels until axis type change to date axis and change the major units if needed. For this case, I would like to increase every 5 units. So instead of having 7, I would change to 5. 
press on enter change the chart title if needed besides we could also add the chart elements by pressing the plus button for example the axis titles if you don't like the color of course we can change it manually or simply change to monochromatic colors and the histogram with unequal class widths are now created as we can see here okay that's all for this video thanks for watching hope you like this see you